Hello and welcome again. So this is a flowchart for a security door and what this does is to allow the user to enter the correct password. You are given three chances to do that and um, if the password is still wrong uh, the door will uh, you know you can set it to make an alarm or you know show an error message and so forth or wait for give you another minute or so to do it again okay so uh, refresh okay so you know you can it can it can be anything any reaction following incorrect input of, of the um, you know the code so that's that's how it is okay um Feel free to pause this video and try have a go at making your own flowchart. All right, there's so many websites out there. You can use even PowerPoint to make a um, uh, to make a flowchart. But here's my example. Now this is incomplete. Okay. Now, for example, show counter in, in here. You can say you can put something like this. Okay, and say reset, reset. Screen. Okay, this appears in so many parts of the program. Okay, every time it's got to I'll ask you to input the screen, input the code, it has to reset the screen first. Same as here again. Okay, reset the screen. Okay, reset. All right. The counter is set to three. Those are the amount of chances you have. Three chances. Input code. That's an instruction. Input and output. So it's expecting you to enter this code. Okay. Then check for validation. Okay. If they entered it right. Then. Is the format right? Yes. Okay. Is the code right? So it's going to check if the code is right. Okay, if the code is not right, then it's gonna be an error code. Okay, it's gonna show you an error message. Okay, and then is the but after showing you an error message, it's gonna ask is the counter equal to zero? If the counter is not equal to zero, it's gonna show the counter because remember here the counter was you know they took off one, so now you have two chances at this point. Then it's going to reset the screen and it's going to ask you to enter the code again. Okay. And then it's going to take away one again. Now two becomes a one chance. Okay. Remaining. Okay. And then it's going to go through the same process. Now looking at it on the other side. Okay. Is the format right? No. Format is not right. It's going to say wrong format. It's going to show an error message. Again, it's going to reset. Okay. Reset this part here it's so gonna reset the screen before asking you to enter the right code okay so you can put a process over there okay you can put a process there all right that's another another part however if the format is right is the code right if the code is right yes it's gonna show you an, a message here saying it's unlocked now you can you know be a little bit naughty here and put another little process saying unlock door yeah so it's gonna say unlocked and then it's gonna you're gonna put a process here okay that should be a rectangle and it says unlock door unlock okay and then end the program yeah that's a u so it looks like a v but it's a u unlock and then that's an l and that's o okay unlock and then end the program that's if everything checks in also at this part here where the co code is not correct okay enter the wrong code you've entered the wrong code it shows you an error message is the counter equal to zero yes your chances are over now okay so the counter is equal to three it's gonna reset that counter pause for 20 seconds Okay, now we said it's gonna pause 60 seconds, so you can make this 60. Okay, 60 second wait. Yeah, okay, pause for 60 seconds, reset, 
the screen, okay? Because the chances are finished. However, um, you can also um, show them an, a, a message, okay? Showing them your chances are over, okay? So you can add, before getting to this point, you can add another input output diagram, okay? Saying chances your chances okay are over okay finished finito it's counted three chances for you three times for you to enter that message the right message and you failed so it's gonna set the counter to three pause for 60 seconds reset the screen clear everything on the screen and then it's gonna say to you chances are over please try again or retry yeah and then it's going to ask for you to input the code okay so that's that's the part of our um our our flow chart okay so here is the code now like i said i don't always um try to complete the whole thing but this code will work out pretty well you know so let me explain it a little bit okay <clears throat> import time now what this line does is to allow the time functionality in your program okay there are pre-made coding programs or you know in the library of um, python this is python by the way so this what they do is to you know allow the timing functions to work in your when the program is running then we're gonna say the global variable called count okay global variable called count now let's go back here a little bit this year we call it counter but in the code i call it count okay i named it count what it does is to store the amount of chances left for you to enter that code we're gonna initiate them okay we're gonna say count and passcode okay these are two variables now if you notice passcode is not a global variable okay it's count like count is a global variable now we're gonna say um count is three got three chances and passcode is five seven eight four that is the code we expect the user to enter to unlock that door okay then we are going to set a function it goes all the way down there there's another function down there okay so in this function this function is we're going to define it and we're going to name it enter code and it's got this parameter in it okay or whichever name you can give it it is expecting a specific value from a variable named count okay so for it to run properly because this value for this variable will be used inside this function but it's coming from outside of the function if that makes sense okay like you're driving a car and expecting fuel in the car or gas the gas is coming from from the petrol petro station so for the car to drive or to work properly you're gonna have to put gas in it so hence as you see here you have the function name and a specific value it requires for it to run global variable code one now let's try we're gonna throw an exception and this exception what it does is check for errors okay if there are any errors whatever happens will be happening in here if there are no errors then this code should run properly try if count equals equals three okay they have three chances code one is equal to integer input enter password so whatever password they're gonna enter it has to be an integer just like this here okay no decimal points or no numbers or any other characters and it will be stored in this variable named code one it's a, remember it's a global variable okay otherwise or elif otherwise if count is equal to zero i mean it's greater than zero okay it's not equal to three but it's greater than zero it could be a two or one yeah 
so the code is equal to now here is where we show the difference here okay now you see this part here where you have the wrong code these are error messages okay they say wrong code enter the right password however when it's starting at the start here it shows it just as you to input the code okay which is why code one and code one can be altered each time there's a an incorrect um, incorrect um, password entered so this will be code one at the start code one is just enter password okay you haven't made any mistakes now if count is greater than zero code one is equal to integer input the wrong code you've entered the wrong code okay but this is another way of um mixing integer values with string values you have to convert the integer value into um a string so this shows for example two turns left yeah then re-enter code otherwise print reloading now this is a point where your chances are finished your chances are over okay no more chances so if there's no more now as you can see if you notice you see this quotation is facing the other way it's because i copied and pasted my code from you know the program i was using platform i was using and put it into my powerpoint but this here what you see here should look like these others okay there's nothing wrong with it it shouldn't be facing this way because this part here doesn't go in quotations this part you see here okay when you're missing a variable of integer data type you can just use the plus signs or commas okay now otherwise it's going to print reloading okay time to sleep 20 so like you said we said it could be 60 seconds of waiting time okay and then it's going to reset the count to three now code one changes okay it's going to say wrong code re-enter code what we could have done as well we can say your chances are over yeah chances are over re-enter code okay at this point what you see here in the else part here is this area when the counter is equal to zero okay that's when all these events are going to take place and that's what well, that's what you see here in this area here okay anyway during the try function after all of this it's then gonna call the function named check codes this function requires code one and count okay otherwise you know, this try fun try part doesn't work you know there's errors when someone entered the you know a b c d or something like that if something fails working here it's gonna be an exception okay it's gonna be an error message that i made now the computer doesn't um show you its default error messages it shows you your own error message that's what, what that's what the try and accept does you know personalized personalized messages that's the word print you might have entered an input number yeah please enter the whole number let's say you typed in five seven eight f or b or c then that's not an integer okay that's when it's going to trigger the exception then it's going to call this function here enter code count that function it's going to call it back so what this part here can also be referred to as a recursion okay a function that calls itself okay now that's the function for entering the code okay so define another function we're going to define another function here very short one and its job is to get the value of code one and the value of count and it's going to use it within itself it's going to say if code one is the same as passcode passcode now now here's where, where, where passcode comes in passcode is the one we set as the actual password for the door the door lock okay it's the one that opens the door this year the passcode okay it's now used right there so as you can guess this function is only gonna run after this one has started check codes it's gonna check the code has been entered it's expecting code one and count 
and then if code one is equal to pass code now this is where you might notice that why we are using code one in this other function code one remember is a global variable it can be used anywhere else so if code one is pass code print welcome unlocking door now we may also say unlock door or something like that okay or a certain code that unlocks the door mechanism okay unlocking door otherwise count is equal to count minus one count minus one now here this is where your chances start decreasing the chances start decreasing and you guessed it right it's then going to call this function that called it in the first place enter code and then count now remember this function expects the value of count at the start the value of count was a three but now the value of count has been changed from three to three minus one so it's a two and then it becomes a one and then it becomes a zero okay and then enter enter code count and this runs all over again so this is how the code works so at the start of the program this function will be running it's the one that is called first enter code and count and then it's gonna run all of this and then invite check codes afterwards at this point here it invites check codes so that's the code that's um that's my um code now if you see any errors or things you probably think you should um change well there's no errors here i don't i don't really see one because the code ran properly but if there are any other validations or whatever you want that you think they should be added in then feel free to make your code that is you know even better than this because i know there's so many of you out there that are really good at are good at python code programming but this is mine you know it's just an example it's a basic one and it shows you um a little bit of how a security door operates so thank you thanks for watching and i hope you've enjoyed it and learned something see you in the next video